Hi, my name is Reverend Jonathan Finlater, and I want to say good morning to you all. I bring you this message in an empty Baptist church, Brighton Road Baptist Church, South Croydon. And it is Sunday, the 22nd of March, 2020. Now, first of all, I would just like to say Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. And I also love to include women um, who are guardians, who are carers of people. And I even include those who are spiritual mothers to someone else. You're all mothers. And I want to say thank you, God, for all of you. I also want to wish a happy birthday to my sister, Miriam. Happy birthday to you. Now, our church is empty this Sunday morning because churches and religious faiths, as well as England on a whole, has been advised by the government to be involved and engaged in social distancing. In accordance with Public Health England, the Baptist Union of Great Britain advised Baptist churches to no longer conduct public worship until further notice. This particular strain of coronavirus, COVID-19, continues to spread globally. Beginning and being first reported in Wuhan, China, it spread to countries like Italy, Spain, Iran, America. It was sad to hear three days ago how Italy's coronavirus death toll has surpassed China. It was troubling watching footage of one of the main hospitals in Italy and how they're struggling and how they're inundated with sick and ill and dying patients. Very hard to watch that footage. And currently in the UK, our coronavirus death toll is apparently now 240 people. 240 people in the UK. Now this morning, I just want to share two brief points with you all. My prayer is that you will be informed biblically, you will be encouraged, and that you will live in hope. So just two brief points. The first point I want to make is that we are living, as the Bible tells us, in the end times. Another way to put this is, these are the last days, or that we are coming to the end of the age. I do not want to look like one of those crazy people that you see in the movies, scruffy and, and, and looking really messy and, and holding these placards and banners, shouting, beware of the, beware, it's the end of the world, or the end of the world is nigh, and everybody's avoiding those people and thinking they're strange and they're really weird. Now, I don't want to be like one of those people in the movies, but I do need to tell you this. In the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, Jesus responds to his disciples when they ask, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And then Jesus gives them a number of signs, including famines, earthquakes, as well as, well as increased wickedness and increased evil. Do you know, from the time that Jesus died, from the time he resurrected, and from the time he ascended to his Father in heaven, that was when the end times began. That was the beginning of the last days. The apostles were living in the last days because they were awaiting, they were expecting the arrival of Jesus. Jesus' return. Jesus' return was imminent, meaning it was to be expected at any time. Well, about 2,000 years later, we are awaiting Jesus' imminent return. And so we, just like the apostles, are living in the last days. Now think about this. If the apostles were living in the last days, and we have gone 2,000 years or so beyond, how much more last days are we living in? And for that reason, I do believe evil 
will continually increase. We will see, I believe, more devastating and tragic events. Why do I say that? Because it's in line and it validates the Bible. The Bible has told us these things will happen. So, how should we be living, you may be asking. How should we be living our lives today? Well, we should be ready. We should be living in readiness, in full expectation. We should be living like we know that Jesus is coming tonight. Almost like we received a memo. It was given to us, handed to us, and it tells us that Jesus is coming tonight. That's how we should be living. The Bible, namely in Colossians chapter 3 verse 5, reminds us to put to death the desires of our flesh. Some versions say mortify, crucify. We are to put to death our fleshly desires, our earthly and wrongful longings. Deal with them and put them to death. How do we do that? We do this by daily confess confessing our sins to the Lord. It's a daily confession of our sins before God. Making sure we are not living with unrepentant sin. I don't want to live with unrepentant sin in my heart. So we daily confess our sins. We are to accept Christ's forgiveness because he died on the cross for our sins and the price of our sins has been paid. We thank God that he also rose again. Jesus rose on the third day. So we should accept his forgiveness in our lives. And we should then submit ourselves fully to him. And the key word there is fully. Submit fully to Christ. And allow Christ to be the Lord of your daily lives. The Lord, the King, the ruler of your lives every single day. This is how we are to live in expectation of Christ's return. And now we come to my second point, which is my final point. And it's that it's quite normal to be worried. It's quite normal to feel afraid. There is a lot of uncertainty right now. There's a lot of confusion, doubt, worry, and questions, concerns that are out there right now. And these are normal. Our government is not telling us everything. We are hearing more about the death tolls than we are hearing about the recoveries, the successful recoveries. Some reports say COVID-19 will be over within three months. Others disagree and say it will be up until autumn or maybe the end of the year. The vaccine for COVID-19 does not seem to be nearly even ready. Some say we are close to finding the vaccine. Some say it could be up to 12 to 18 months. And then even when the vaccine is ready for the general public, there is a fear as to whether to take it or not. What's going to be in that substance? Could it cause more harm than good? And then there's the financial issues and what state our country will be in economically when all this is over. These are all the worries and questions and concerns that people may have. But all this to say, it is understandable for people to worry and be afraid. I think it's silly to sort of act as if we, sh we that it's kind of abnormal to be afraid. It's, it's normal. When the reports and when the information comes in, and it's constantly pumping our ears and it's informing our minds, it can be very worrying. It can bring fear and that's the obvious outcome. But I want to remind you of all this. The Bible talks about not worrying numerous times. The other day I asked my children, I asked them, why do you think the Bible tells us not to worry so many times? And my daughter said that they think it's because we worry all the time. We seem to do it naturally. They are very, very correct. Yes, we do. We do it very naturally. 
We worry very easily and we forget what God's word instructs us. Some people call it spiritual amnesia. We forget things. We need to be reminded of God's word. So what we really need to do this morning is we need to pump our ears and fill our minds with God's word. Because God's word is full of encouragement, it's full of promises, and it's full of hope. Amen. Scripture tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Many of you know this verse very well, Philippians 4, 6. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. To deal with worry, we need to pray about everything and every situation, everything. There's a question I want to ask you. Do you even realise what prayer does? Do you even realise the power of prayer? Prayer changes our atmosphere of fear. Let that sink in for a moment. Prayer changes our atmosphere of fear. If you're in an atmosphere of fear and worries and you're scared, the atmosphere, you can change that atmosphere by praying, by looking to Christ. It will change your atmosphere and the worries and the fears that you're dealing with. Verse 7 goes on to say, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God's peace, not that the world can give you, not that the world can even understand, but God's peace guards your heart. It protects not only your heart, but it also protects your minds. God's peace is like a protective barrier. It protects your hearts, which in turn affects your thoughts and your actions. So when you have God's peace, you will remain calm in the storm, the storms of life. And we are in a storm right now, the pandemic, this COVID-19. It's a storm. It will pass. But to remain calm, we need God's peace. May it guard your hearts this morning. And so I leave you with this. I end here. Remember, we are living in the last days. And I will speak more about this another time and its implications to us. We are living in the last days, the end times. But live ready, live blamelessly, live righteously, and live Christ-like. Live your lives unto the Lord until he returns. And lastly, do not worry, do not be anxious, but bring every concern, every problem, every worry, every doubt, bring it all, all, to the Lord in prayer. Thank you for listening and please be encouraged. This is from Brighton Road Baptist Church, South